Time now for this week's Health Matters. Paul Kritz here, along with physician assistant Lynn Zabo. After a, a couple of weeks off, one week was, was me, and the other week was you. Yeah, it was me. Because of COVID. I huh? got COVID. I'm so shocked. I'm so shocked. Because I'm, like, super immunized. Uh -huh. But, however, I was barely sick. So really? part of my shock was, really, is this... Really? <laughs> okay. Was it? Was it? Did it feel like time off? Did you get to enjoy it in that regard, or was it still being sick? Kind of, but time off is boring to oh, me. So I was, okay. I was more bored. That was the drama. I was bored. Okay. And stuck in my house. And the takeaway is, though, uh, get your immunizations because it keeps you just to you just sit around being bored in your house. Then. Yeah. 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 It's okay. an awful thing. Oh well, I'm glad you're better. I'm glad we're back. <clears throat> and this this week's episode, uh, as we resume. Uh, it uh, it's kind of a tour through the uh, the the I I imagine the the the, the healthcare professionals funhouse here. I know this was super exciting. <laughs> what are so, we looking at? Today? So maybe I had a fever when I thought of this, but who knows? <laughs> um, so we're talking about weird diseases that you don't want, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so I want to start with, you know, the first thing is that that humans suffer from these diseases. A lot of them um, don't really have good solutions and and um, a lot of them are catastrophic, really. Right. And my list here goes from, you know, kind of interesting to like, what was that again? Um, so, you know, we should have some th sympathy and we're right. not really making fun. We're just trying to educate ourselves. But so, there, there's very much also a, ain't that weird kind of kind of. It aspect is weird. Yeah. I'm glad I don't have that. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the first one is pica, which is pretty common. A lot of people actually, um, I've seen in my career mentions of it, but not had any direct contact with anybody had it. So mm -hmm. this is where a person eats things that are not food. Oh, okay. I've heard of okay. this. Yeah. Super common in the South. Really? Super common in pregnant women, huh. probably related to nutritional deficiencies. What kinds of things? Like really okay. weird. And, and I have to say they're compulsed to mm -hmm. eat things. So they uh, oftentimes clay. Okay. I've heard that as that's, well, right? That's a super... And actually in the South, um, there's generations of women in the same family who when they're pregnant, they kind of go to the communal clay now i don't know area. why i think this but aren't isn't there something like like clay charcoal sort of things that are like soothing for the for the the gut no i don't think that's it i think it has to do actually with um probably not enough food and anemia especially during pregnancy okay. a really common thing okay okay so um but people also pick things like crayons hair <laughs> rocks Paint chips. I, I just have to break in and ask, where are you from again? Where am I from? Mm -hmm. Like, where were you born? Where did you learn to talk? I was born in Ohio, but I left when I was a month old. So, um, the Bay Area. The Bay Area. Okay. Yeah. And and what do you call the things you color with again? Crayons. Crayons. Yeah. What do you call them? Crayons. Oh, I'm sorry. To hear no, that. no, no. That's just yeah. I know. <laughs> that's just fun. I like I like noticing things like that. That's yeah, cool. Are you so, saying I'm saying it wrong? No, no, nobody's saying it wrong. We're saying it differently, and I, that's intriguing to me. I yeah. like that. Well, here's the here's the thing that people are compulsed to eat. Sometimes that grosses everybody out. Uh -huh. Feces. Ooh, yeah. That's that's pretty gross. Yeah, and it makes people depressed and um, super anxious if they because mm -hmm. these are compulsions. And so they think they think they're related to stress and mental health issues like OCD and schizophrenia, but also, I I think nutritional deficiencies. There, there's got to be something. I mean, if there are common things that people with pica are, are compulsed to eat, it right. seemed like there'd be some sort of connection beyond just OCD right. or schizophrenia. Right, and and I, I think that. Very few patients come in and say, "Look, this I have a problem with yeah, this." Right. They I don't eat, see it as a problem. I'm eating cranes. Yeah. <laughs> is it is that bad? Yeah. <laughs> until until they get something, because cause if you eat a lot of stuff that's not easily digestible, like none of this was made for humans to digest it, mm -hmm. then you get something called a bezoar, which we all remember from Harry Potter. Oh yeah. So a bezoar is a massive undigestible. Uh, stuff that gets stuck usually in the stomach and causes a gastric obstruction. And okay. I have seen that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from Chinese food in the elderly lady. Really? All the fiber, she couldn't, couldn't do it. You know, she was, she liked Chinese food. There's nothing wrong with eating Chinese sure. food. Sure. She just happened to store it in her stomach, I guess. Wow, wow. Yeah. And fiber, yeah, fiber. Fiber yeah. kind of knocks me down, too, if I, yeah. if I get a whole bunch of it going through. Yeah. Yeah. So the next one, actually, I think my mom had this, um, which is called misophonia. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and these people that have those, they find normal sounds to be painful and unbearably loud. Wow. And so I remember her, like, pretty much until she died, it, you know, a normal sound would happen, like a car going by on the street, and she would screech and cover her ears. Oh, we can just as um, you said so that a car it's, goes it's really by. painful, and they spend a lot of time trying to stay away from what they perceive as excessively loud noises, uh-huh. but everybody that's around them is going, what? Is it is it is it related to decibels? Is it just a <clears throat> lower threshold for... for I don't think, I think it's probably um, uh, some kind of neurologic peculiarity mm-hmm. in the way sound is kind of um, processed mm-hmm. in the, from their ears to their brain. And it's like their volume is set wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because it, it's not only too loud, it's painful. It feels like like glancing pain, which is lightning-like pain oh, wow. into their brain. Oh, my god! And they screech. They, don't, they do not like it. Um, and it can be associated with ringing in the ears and also weirdly hearing loss. So it's something uh-huh. about the whole system that doesn't quite work right. And it makes people super anxious. And unfortunately, it's not that uncommon. People don't really realize it's a disease entity. Mm-hmm. They just blame their environment for mm-hmm. causing them anxiety or stress or pain. Um, I think that's interesting too. Just the the, the 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 interplay between you know quote unquote objective reality and subjective reality <clears throat> when you have right. something just in the processing of your, your your senses and it just seems you're you're sure it's out there. It's not in here. Yeah, I can hear it. It's over if there. If you kids would just be quiet, I, I can't mm. tell you how many times no, I heard that, no. and I'm like, really? Wow. I'm like what? Well, it's good so, that you didn't know. I mean, if you were, you know. Had any yeah, sort of well, reason, it, you, you could I, use in my that. mom's case, it made her not favor her hearing aids, which mm. I think contributed to other problems that she had. Right. But uh, misophonia. So I, I would think that somebody in the exam room, if they were really in touch with this disease, they could pick it up. Mm-hmm. Like maybe if they closed a drawer and somebody winced. Wow. And they wow. could ask them about that. It's surprisingly common. So we're starting to get into weird land. Um, <laughs> Capgras delusion. So C A P G R A S delusion. So this is probably named after a, the physician who first described it. But it's a delusion or a disorder which causes a person to believe that someone close to them has been replaced by an imposter. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Yeah. And sometimes. This very Doctor Who. Sometimes they feel like their timeline has been changed. And oh. They've been taken to a, a time in history that is not theirs. Wow. So imposters around them at a wrong time in history. And that, I, I think oh. they focus more on the imposters mm-hmm. and then they get to the historical thing as a way to maybe explain it. That is. I don't know. That is. So it's almost, yeah, it's almost like they've, they've, They've made yeah they made that like Doctor Who jump right they've, right. they've gone through the portal but you know against but, their will but they don't have the resiliency to deal with it they're they're like terrified oh my god and they get to the point sometimes where they attack the imposters around them whoa so as you as you can imagine this is definitely goes along with schizophrenia and some types of dementia but listen man it's associated with diabetes migraines. Hypothyroidism, which is low thyroid, uh-huh. and ketamine. Ketamine doesn't surprise me, but um, but some other people with more, way more normal diseases can all of a sudden have this life experience. Wow! Wow! Yeah, my goodness. So I, it's it's, it's a what's what's su- common uh, with those with those other more normal quote unquote normal diseases. I, don't really I mean, know. there's blood some, pressure, some change inflammation in the, in the brain that. We just don't understand our oh brains. We really don't. Right, right, yeah. And and this is not an, a singular, some of these are not singular disease entities. They're secondary to underlying mm-hmm. disorders. And this, I, I think, is one. I also think that this is part of a syndrome and, and really instead of a disease, or mm-hmm. they, although they called it a disease in my research. Um, and a syndrome is a bunch of um, symptoms that kind of go together at, probably for different reasons mm-hmm. that are causing it um, wow wow and, and okay. so we don't you can't just say like they're not causally yeah connected. they're just okay. yeah okay. They, they show up in different kinds of diseases so right. the underlying disorder is you know, even more of a mystery wow 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, I was intrigued when I just looked over the list of this. Anything that has like delusion in <laughs> its title is going to be it's going to be fun. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the next one is also a syndrome, <laughs> Alice in Wonderland syndrome. I have to say, I I think I've had this a little what? bit on and off. Okay. So um, this is a feeling of an alteration of body image, specifically in visual um, perception and also, I would say, somatic perception of it, it, what it feels like is... Like dysmorphia? Yeah, no, no, it's it's only temporary. It, you, all of a sudden you feel like your hand is really big. Just a part of it, you? Yeah. Oh, like, wow. Un, like three times the size it normally is. Uh-huh. And it's not that you necessarily see that, although I think some people do. It's It it's, has to do with the proprioception. So proprioception is um, our understanding of where our bodies are at any point in time. Mm-hmm. And so all of a sudden there's like something about the proprioception ability just kind of gets glitchy. Oh my gosh. And I, I have felt this. It's usually when people fall asleep and it's usually the perception that their hands or their head are the wrong size. <laughs> the wrong size. Yeah, the wrong size. That is that is scary. Yeah. That is like that that sounds like a bad trip, man. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Um <clears throat> And it happens most commonly at night as you're going to sleep, as I said. But here's another thing, another theme we're going to see. This particular syndrome is associated with migraine, seizures, brain tumors, drugs, and some viruses. Mm-hmm. So you're going to see migraines being, having a, you know, we think about migraines. A lot of people say they have migraines. What they usually mean is it's they a have a really headache. bad headache. Right. I mean, migraines are a different but thing. But actual right? migraines, as medicine understands them, has all this other weird stuff associated. And they... I would think that unless a person really brought that forth in the exam room or had somebody address that, mm-hmm. it would be kind of terrifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can understand that. There's a, there's a, there's an eye thing that I've gotten a handful of times in in, in right. my life that is a kind Ocular of ocular mig- migraine. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh-huh. And it's not painful or anything. It's really disconcerting for me. It's right. like, oh my god, the first couple of times, and then I go, oh, this again, and yeah. it got easier to deal with, and it comes and goes. But yeah, you know, that that yeah. was a kind of migraine. Yeah. So what, what, just as an aside, what do we understand what, what unites all these different kinds of migraines? What makes them migraines as opposed to other things? Well, we used to think it was a mess up in the, in like a traffic jam of the vascular flow, flow of the brain. Uh-huh. But they've gotten away from that, actually. And they think it's, an, uh, it's a pattern of um, neuron excitement that kind wow. of goes through the brain and then everything is like offline for a little bit. Kind of a little electrical storm, maybe? Yeah, a little like, seizure sort of yeah, thing? Yeah, not okay. a seizure. Um but um, just kind of glitchy, mm-hmm. like when your phone's glitchy and you re- reboot it. So when people have migraines, oftentimes their advice that sleep is good medicine. Yeah, yeah. sleep's and always that's good. A, that's a rebooting. Um, so treatment for this, Alice in Wonderland syndrome, if it bothers people, I found my experiences not to be a big deal, but um, is migraine prevention. And if, uh, as an aside, if somebody's getting more than um, I would say two or three migraines a month, really m- real migraines, I'm using the medical term, mm-hmm. then they should be talking to their physician about prevention. It's mm-hmm. super easy to do and um, really doesn't have a downside. Have we done an episode on migraines? We have, haven't we? It seems like I remember something I like that. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I have to dig that up because I'd like to know what sort of things you can do to prevent migraines. Oh, okay. All That's right. all. Just, an aside, just an, a, a programming note to myself. There okay. you go. Note to self. Note. <laughs> Here's my favorite one. Exploding <laughs> head syndrome. <laughs> oh, wow. Why is this your favorite? So this is this is kind of like, you know, when you fall asleep and you, and you feel like you're falling off a cliff. Yeah, this, yeah. This is kind of a similar thing. <laughs> It, it Despite the terrifying name, it really has no long-term <laughs> consequences. It's just startling and fearful for people. I may have I may have experienced this yeah. wow okay so it's a perception that during sleep or near sleep a person experiences an auditory hallucination of a loud frightening explosion mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and sometimes they see a flash of light but yep. it's not painful and it's it, as quick as it shows up it's gone yeah um it's short term and definitely scary but no big deal in the long run so it's some kind of some kind of glitch that's brought on by sleep. That is, that's or near sleep. That seems like that's kind of a that's kind of a time for a lot of these things, huh? Yeah, I think your brain 
You just, as it's shutting it's down, it's switching like, into like some. I don't think it's shutting down. It's well, it's like sleep mode or something. Right, 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 right. And it and it's like, what was that? <laughs> I have never heard of anybody that had this, but but um, I've I've had that that thing that made me like, what was that? I've oh done yeah, that. that jerk and that feeling that you're falling. No, I but think no, specifically allowed something I've had. Yeah. Well. Wow. Maybe that's it. Well, there you go. Yeah. That explains a whole bunch. I'm going to try I'm going to see if I can use that with my boss. I've got exploding head syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> I can't come in today. <laughs> Wear a hat. Come in to your work. Chart. <laughs> 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 anyway. So the next one is Cotard's uh, delusion, which is also called walking corpse syndrome. Oh my god. This, I I think there was a nod to this on Grey's Anatomy once, but I didn't realize the name. But it's a delusional belief that a person thinks they are dead whoa and that they're actually rotting and that they have lost their internal organs this is like a horrific horror movie oh my god and about half the people with this syndrome think they don't actually exist anymore like they're just they're just done. ghosts they're, they're just, just gone wow they're moldering in their grave and about half of them think they're immortal <laughs> So that's what? kind of interesting. I wonder if you can go back and forth between them. That would be wow. Yeah, that would that be a would superpower. Be yeah. So how how do they how do they exhibit that? How do they act that out? Are they just laying there going, "Oh, I'm dead," or they're not responding, or is it? They're trying to convince people that they're dead, or they they're surprised that people see them and interact with them because wow. they they think they're not into. I think there was an ER episode where where somebody was under. Yeah. was like under a sheet on a gurney and telling everybody he was dead. That person right. actually was Bobcat Goldthwaite, and you could tell from his voice that it was Bobcat Goldthwaite, but <laughs> that was his deal. He was dead. Leave me alone. I'm dead. Wishful Whoa. thinking, I guess. I don't know. But here's here's the pathology. This is what's interesting to me. And there are some thoughts that the, there's damage to the brain that causes this, and the damage specifically is in the amygdala, frontal lobe, or sometimes the parietal lobe. So they've specified, the take home there is they've specified what part of the brain seems to damage in this particular part seems to kind of cause this syndrome. And, th and those are th aren't those three parts that are sort of like kind of physically separated though? I mean, do they... Do they they are, but there's overlay though. Yeah, yeah, you know, lots of function lobe, shared and stuff. For example, has a lot to do with seizures in some people. And frontal lobe is, is like what you hope your your young adult kid gets. Yeah. So that's <laughs> something so annoying. Right, um, right. Yeah, <laughs> but this, of course, is also associated with psychosis, depression, migraines again. Oh wow, my god, wow. and brain tumors. So um, I I could see that somebody would. At least for a period of time, try and keep this quiet. And I, I can't imagine there's somebody on Del Norte that has that. But I hope they're talking to their doctor. The other weird thing is that these people have an adverse reaction to the drug acyclovir. So acyclovir is a well-known drug for cold sores, um, which is herpes one, and also um, other types of herpes, which is that herpes, herpes two. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also variations of it that are used for things like shingles. Um, and chicken pox and stuff. It's a super benign drug. I've right. been using it my entire career, even before it was legitimate in the FDA. I was use, using it experimentally. I have never seen anybody have a problem with it. Wow. So um, that's, What's sort I guess, of... a weird test. You could have your doctor give you an acyclovir prescription and see what happens. And see how, see how it takes. My goodness. Yeah. I just, yeah, I'm still interested. I'm intrigued by that, 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 uh, that dichotomy of, you know, I don't exist or I'm immortal. That would be, right. wow. Or is wow. that death got me and I'm still alive? Oh, right, right. Yeah, I'm above yeah, the I, laws. I think of... some of it might be an attempt to understand it, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know. Um, I mean, because that would make sense. Even though my guts are rotting, um, there's people are still reacting to me like I'm normal and alive. Oh, okay, yeah, that would be, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That just uh, that just changes mm -hmm. every mummy film I ever saw. I know, and some of the saints actually. Yeah, yeah right. Corrupt corpse. <laughs> what? Uh, wow. Anyway, <laughs> this is really fun. So um, the next one, the last one, um, is can it? I, I don't really know how to say it. I'll say it. Canates subida, um, which is also cause called hyperthymesia. And this is kind of trippy. This is a rare ability, not very common, um, to remember every vivid detail about your entire life. And oh my it, God. And it's usually the individual's life. It's not external events. Uh -huh. Okay. 
Um, and these guys think excessively about their past, mm -hmm. but they don't always get it right, but they are certain they got it right. Okay. Okay. Um, and they can see their memories in their head, which is kind of weird. How they do you a, mean? A visual perception of memory. I do sometimes, but not all the time. Um, but how do you store your memories? Visually. Really? That's, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I have them in words. I don't know why. Wow. Left wow. brain, I guess. Um, so these memories are encoded involuntarily. So these people aren't like studying hard for the final or something. They, they, it just happens in their head and it comes up kind of unbidden. So it's automatically starts playing the script in their oh head. Oh my God. Okay. I was, I was wondering what's, what would be the difference between this and what would be commonly called like a photographic memory? Like, yeah. Um, because these are not always accurate. Mm -hmm. And photographic memory implies accuracy. Well, yeah, but I think yeah. that's also a misnomer and a misunderstanding. It could of memory be, and it general. could be a continuum of okay. the same okay. process. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's only limited to autobiographical information. Oh, and somebody with a photographic memory—you just see something and would be able to yeah. read something. You could, yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, <clears throat> and it affects mostly long-term memory. Weirdly, people who have this, their short-term memory is terrible. <laughs> so it's like all their efforts in memory go to long-term, almost embellished a little bit. Uh -huh, so they're uh -huh. not always accurate, but it's super vivid to them and they're certain they're right. Wow. So um, hyperthymesia. Is there, that's interesting because it also, I mean, that just begs so many questions too about memory in general and, and, oh, totally. and the efficacy of memory and, and the, the truth of memory. It would be super cool, not to sound ghoulish, hmm? but to do some kind of post-mortem evaluation of, of people with these atypical brains and mm -hmm. kind of, it would give us more understanding of what the pathways are, what normalcy is. Yeah. And cause you would see where it goes off the road. Right. Exactly. That's yeah. what this would be. These signposts of like, Hey, this is when it goes haywire. That should show you when it doesn't go haywire, what, right. what's going on there. But that just, right. But wow. it, I, I think unless this is really disturbing somebody's life, I think most people try, I mean, I'm sure it's perplexing. Mm -hmm. They don't want people to think they're crazy. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that would commonly come up in an exam room that, uh, I don't know, maybe in um, in visits with counselors or um, psychiatrists, perhaps. And it, I also think it would be hard for a patient to describe this stuff so that a provider, seven and a half minutes, right, could really listen right. and understand what was being said. Mm -hmm. because. These, in my opinion, some of these syndromes go beyond ex just simple explanations. Right, right. And, and you know, we don't always know what somebody truly means when they're telling us stuff. It would be super easy to say, oh, you're nuts. Take some Zyprexa. <laughs> you're nuts. <laughs> you know? Here. And, and that's unfortunate <laughs> because it's a disservice to a lot of people sure. um, with these syndromes. It doesn't really help. But... Um, I would say if you have migraines, getting a migraine prophylaxis seems to be a common theme. Right. Um, and that's the thing, and it's hardly ever done. And I think it could save a lot of suffering for people. Why? Just because people don't understand that they're talking about migraines? Um, yeah, I think because the word migraine means different headache. things right. to different yeah. people. And it's really hard to say you're not having a migraine. You're having a really bad headache. A migraine's more a more specific neurologic mm -hmm. event mm -hmm. and, and and providers don't um i don't think they ask oftentimes like how long is this happening mm -hmm. i think they do in a neurologist's office so fortunately we have a neurologist who is well versed in migraine in humboldt county and her evaluations of people are beautiful really and really helpful to them mm -hmm. so, like asking the right questions yeah totally but if somebody is going to the er with quote unquote migraine, air quotes, migraines, um, let's say once a month, which is not that unusual in this community, mm -hmm. who's the provider that's going to sit down and say, look, I don't think you're a pain med seeker. I, I think you have a problem that could be dealt with in a preventative mode. Well, yeah. And that's, as you've explained on this right. very, on this very show, that's not the role of the ER. At right, all. not the role of the ER, mm -hmm. and it's just easier for him to say, "Oh God, she, you know, she's back." It's usually she. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what gets me too is that it, 
somebody would have in a lot of these 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 uh, syndromes and, and and things that you've outlined here you'd have to you'd have to know that your subjective reality in some of these is different than other people's subjective reality and you might not you might think that oh yeah. these intrusive like really detailed autobiographical memories i have everybody goes through this to some degree or something Wait. you know and that but would be a I would think thing in your life sometime, like maybe fourth grade or something, when you're staring out the window, you're reconstructing your life, mm -hmm. you know, like a, a version of your life. Mm -hmm. And and the teacher gets mad at you and says, C can you focus on your spelling words? Mm -hmm. I think an astute you know, parent or teacher could kind of look at that closely. Yeah, but more yeah. often than not, they're going to see that as a behavioral issue. And you That's know, right. worst case scenario, they end up medicated Absolutely. for something entirely but we different. Have, we now have some good pediatric... Um, care up here actually mm -hmm. some phenomenal pediatric not that we haven't had it but now we have like more of it That's which great. is happy news for del norte so um the, in particular there's a couple of pediatricians in the uhs system who are like phenoms wow so they're starting to i've noticed in their evaluation of kids is they're starting to get these nuances not necessarily about these problems but other problems mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah, wow. super hopeful. So you've been you've been uh, you've been working the teen clinic. Oh yeah. Yeah, how's that going? It's going really good. You were telling me you found the secret to engage youth. Yes, if you feed them junk food, they will come. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we're getting about, I would say maybe eight to twelve people, average of ten. Wow. And and they're showing up hungry. Oh my god. And even the young men are coming. Oh right. Yeah, they, they kind of sneak into my office because my office is easily accessible, uh -huh. and kind of under the radar. Um, <clears throat> and they they're asking for bags of condoms. Very sweet. Oh wow. Um, yeah, and they're not. You know, their brains aren't exploding or anything mm -hmm. terrible happening mm -hmm. to them. And I get. I think we also have a cohort of young. Um, freshmen, sophomore, and uh, junior women who are like rocking the birth control adulting. Really? Yeah. Great. They're learning how to fill out paperwork. Mm -hmm. They're learning, um, you know, what it means to have in um, a, a grant source that'll pay for their care. They're learning what um, confidentiality is and how to work within that system. Wow. So it all started with a bag of Fritos. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <clears throat> so super proud of them. Mm -hmm. Super proud of them. And a lot of mothers who are actually bringing their daughters there and an occasional son. That's really, really awesome. What are the yeah. hours then for the uh, the teen clinic here, which is in the uh, uh, right across the parking lot there from, from Del Norte High here in Crescent City? Yeah, and you can't miss it. It has a huge poster or banner on the side. Mm -hmm. um, it is Tuesdays mm -hmm. from 1 to 5. Okay. And... I will say that kids do have access to reproductive health care during school hours, mm -hmm. um, and it that can be confidential. So, during school hours, any day. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any day that we're there, which is Tuesday. Oh, afternoon. so just two. <laughs> but they could also call it, hypothetically come down to the the main clinic and access care if mm -hmm. they felt like they needed that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, this is this has been really fun. You were, you know you said something about uh, uh, maybe working up a part two for this. Yeah, episode, I know. Right? There's so many weird diseases. <laughs> oh my god. I had to, I did share. I was hanging out with my folks uh, uh, yesterday, and uh, I forget in what context we were talking about it, but I did share the uh, the uh, uh, the the kind of uh, I don't want to say insider, but uh, or the way. The way that uh, uh, patients in, in certain uh, uh, instances are spoken of by healthcare issues, I did share the uh, the dying swan oh, patient yeah. with that's, them. They that's a Mad River Hospital they origin. They love that. Yeah. They love that. Oh they yeah, <laughs> yeah. My dog has adopted the dying swan oh, at no, four thirty in the morning. Anyway, oh. I also want to say we have a couple minutes. Uh, we have one minute. <laughs> one minute. Mm -hmm. um, Call uh, Del Norte Community Health Center if you're a woman who needs a routine mammogram. Mm -hmm. They're having a mobile mam mammogram um, clinic. I think it's the 18th, but don't quote me on that. Okay. It's not really well advertised. Uh, it, it doesn't matter whether you have insurance. They're targeting wow. partnership. Um, it's probably going to take 30 to 40 people. And um, because of the lack of advertising, they really wanted me to mention that on the air. Okay. You can call um, and ask to speak to nurse 
Nurse Sarah. Call Nurse Sarah. Do you happen to know the number off the top of your Not head? Not off the yeah, top yeah, of okay. my head. Del Norte Del- Community Del- Health Center. Mm-hmm. Or you could show up there if you happen to be driving by. Wow. And um, get an appointment for this important screening tool. I don't think they would necessarily turn away men either but men don't get screening mammograms so yeah, i'm not yeah. sure how that works okay well excellent that's a great thing to know yep all right thank you lynn we'll uh, we'll talk again next week okay